Okay, guys, this is part two of this uh, first fruit series. Um, I want to start off because uh, I was I was going to cut the, that last video in two, and um, the part that I was going to cut it at, uh, I said something that I want to clarify, and um, so that no one misunderstands. Although I'm sure there will be people who were will, and they'll probably unsubscribe, but that's okay. Um, Sorry, I'm trying not to move the, the cord. Um, when I was talking about the, the time of testing and that n no one's going to enter into heaven with a sinful nature, um, not saying, you know, because we all sin. Uh, so I want to be more specific about that. Um, we're all sinful. We all have a sinful nature. Um, what I was really trying to say was that those who are non-repentant, basically, um, if they're stuck in the world still and they get the wake-up call that it's time to get right and they are still refusing, then um, they're going. that's why they got to go through their time of testing. Father in His mercy is going to extend His grace and, you know, urge them, implore them to um, you know, come on, let's get it together and repent of your sins. Ask for forgiveness. Um, mean it in your heart. Uh, because for those who choose of their own free will not to do that, they can't enter in, whether they've said they believe in him or not. That's, that's not how Father's kingdom works. Um, you have to be washed white. And the only way, you know, yes, Yeshua's sacrifice washes us, but we are also called to repentance. I mean, John the Baptist, that's what he preached. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, yes, we're saved by his grace, but that's that's the first part. The rest of it is, is up to the individual. So, and the reason I wanted to clarify that is... Um, because uh, the first fruits of the wheat harvest, which is at Shavuot, uh, there are two loaves that are offered up, and they have leaven, which means there's still some corruption in them, but they have, you know, they're not as um, purified as the bride is, but they did the best they could in the time that they had. But their hearts, Father looks at our heart. So as long as he's looking at their heart and they're like, man, I'm, I'm messed up. I should have, you know, I, I should have gotten right when people were telling me to, and I don't know if I'm going to go or not. You know, if that's the kind of heart they have, a contrite heart, it doesn't matter if they haven't, you know, if they had just done something awful the day before. When their name is called, they're going, as long as their heart is right. So they will have more leaven, more corruption in them than the bride who is who's done everything in her um, power in this flesh to keep herself clean so that's my understanding um, because of course the enemy is going to send people to try to debate and and I don't even I'm not even worried about that anymore it's like if these people want to waste time doing that then uh Abba help them because there's no time for debating and arguing and you know there's no time for that that's from the enemy that's just the devil trying to cause confusion and division and I'm not having it so if someone comes to this channel and wants to leave some kind of comment of division it's getting deleted and that person will be blocked because there's no time for that nonsense um, I'm just being, <laughs> I'm being honest with you guys. Okay, so I came back to, um, this because while I was, uh, waiting for the video, the last video to process, I was thinking about it because I, when I kind of stumbled over the white and the brilliant, you know, um, you sure were referring to most likely a wheat field, but I think it's dual meaning because of, what I showed in my calendar, um, you know, Shavuot is 50 days after Nissan 16. Um, 
so uh, you know you take away a 10 day thing we know you know i don't know how everything is going to work as far as the time of testing I, I do believe there will be a time of testing because the pattern is in scripture and that's not just me saying that or you know imagining it it's in scripture that that's where the pattern is so the dual meaning i think this has is that um maybe this white bright brilliant is referring to the bride who's already gotten her her robe that has been washed she's already without spot or wrinkle so that part refers to her and then you know this beginning part because it does refer to a crop that is ready so perhaps this first definition applies to the barley crop that has um, already uh, been harvested as the first fruits of the barley and then down here <laughs> dead <laughs> the white part you can see that it's both they both mean white but they're separated so I believe that this first definition refers to the first fruits of the barley, um, which is the bride, and then this definition in John 4.35 refers to the first fruits of the wheat. That's just my take on it. But, um, it, it, I mean, this is not coincidence. Do you see the numbers here? Uh, it's It can't be coincidence. Father, he put this here because he knew... He would give us eyes to see and understanding. Okay, so moving on. Um, let's see what's next. Okay, so here we are in Levit Leviticus 23, where all the feasts are laid out. And um, the Feast of First Fruits, this is speaking of the barley. Um, and the first Fruits is, technically, it is the first gleanings of whatever crop, whether it's a grain or a fruit. Um, but the first fruits is primarily refers to the best the whatever matures first is considered the best of your crop and that's why you have to offer it up um before you can partake of the rest of your crop it's uh that's why it's an offering so we there is a first fruits here which is uh Nissan 16 um does it say that in here i know that it does yes the morrow after the sabbath so that would be nissan 16 the sabbath it's referring to is the first day of unleavened bread which is always a sabbath and then when you come down here to pentecost or shavuot it also refers to first fruits but this is the first fruits of the wheat so um Guys, I mean, this is just, if nothing happens this time, then I don't know. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> that's obviously another stepping stone to keep us going, but I'm, I mean, there's so many things that are happening right now outside of what we're looking at that, uh, it, something's got to break soon. And, and if it doesn't happen on the, you know, there are perceived dates, then we're learning something in scripture and, that's what the father wants and um for those who may be new to my channel whenever i point to any date on a calendar it's 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 because the dates are in scripture and they usually 99 percent of the time revolve around the feast days so the feast days are on specific dates on the calendar so i when those feast dates are approaching then I start looking at them and see how they line up with things that are going on so I don't just um, you know come up with a, a random date and say this is this is this is it um, and so I want to make that clear for my new subscribers and welcome by the way thank you for being here so um, as I said, this Feast of First Fruits refers to the bride who's ready to go first. It, originally, it was Yeshua. He was the first fruits of all first fruits. Um, him being offered up on the morrow after the Sabbath. And, um, well, I won't go into the timing of things, but uh, 
my understanding is it would be now you know I don't know I think some some calendars say the 17th because so many people are stuck on the the days of the week thing the you know the Good Friday the Sabbath Saturday and then the Resurrection Sunday thing and my understanding you know there were no back then they they didn't go by Friday Saturday Sunday there and nowhere in the Bible are the the days of the week called by a name they're always the first day second day whatever and and that's because they fluctuate as as the procession of things move along those days will change so um resurrection well i don't want to get into that because somebody will will get upset and argue so i'm going to keep going okay so um wait a minute um so the Yeshua is going to wave his the first fruits, his first fruits, which will be his bride, and the priest shall wave it. Who's the priest? Yeshua is the priest. He's our high priest, and he will wave the first fruits offering his bride uh, to be accepted. And then, um, and there will be a drink offering of wine. And then, uh, then it goes on to, oh, I know what I was going to say. Hang on. Okay. So in a way, this is, it's kind of speaking to the bride. Of course it was, you know, to the children of Israel and then Yeshua himself, but it's also speaking to the bride who is part of the 144,000. And, and for those who are new here, I do have a teaching on that, um, in my playlist and, it's my understanding through what the Holy Spirit led me through in that study that there are two groups of 144. They are the two witnesses. Um, they're not two individuals. They're those are the spirit of Elijah, spirit of Moses, in two groups of people that will be witnessing. And if you are of the belief that they're two individual men, or that the 144,000 are only Jewish men who are virgins, or um, that there's only one group of 144,000 or whatever, if, if you disagree, that's fine. But leaving your comment to try to persuade me otherwise is not going to happen. Uh, the Holy Spirit led me on the study and he's my teacher. So you can disagree. That's okay. But, um, you're not going to persuade me to change what I believe the Holy Spirit has shown me. Doesn't mean I have everything right because I'm still human and we all see through a glass dimly, but um, that's that. Okay. Uh, the, the, this, from what I see when I read this, he, when, for you on the morrow of the Sabbath, okay. And ye shall offer, okay, now here in verse 12, this, in my spirit, this tells me that he's speaking to the bride now, who is part of the 144,000 who will be going out to br help bring in the harvest. And he's saying to her, ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf, and he lay without blemish of the first year. Uh, we know this was Yeshua and his sacrifice. And, um, oh, no, wait, I'm, I'm going, I'm reading the wrong verse. It's back up here, verse 10. Um, and say unto them, so Moses, who is a type and shadow of Yeshua, because he was the leader, he was the teacher of the law, he's just, he's a type and shadow. Um, say unto them, when you, when you come into the land which I give unto you. So they did not observe the feast of first fruits until they entered into the promised land which is with joshua crossing the jordan oh by the way sister nicole from lighting fires for christ if you're listening i i got something cool to show you about joshua crossing the jordan as you claimed uh on your um vigil your prayer vigil last night that um you've been shown over and over of about crossing the Jordan and for those who may be new to this channel who don't know of uh, our sweet sister Nicole and our brother Jerry that um, does every Sunday 7 central they do a prayer vi vigil for the lost um, and 
it's a time of fellowship and where we are all in prayer and um I just love them both. They're such a blessing to the body. So uh, you might want to go check out, if I remember, I'll leave a link. If not, it's Lighting Fires for Christ. And um, it's Nicole and Jerry. And you should join us um, there on their channel for the live session, Sunday p.m., 7 Central. Okay. Um, so they did not observe feast of first fruits until they entered into the promised land this is what it says when you be when you come into the land which i give unto you and uh, we know that canaan was the land that was given unto them as the promised land so in a way this verse is saying if you if you can read with your spiritual goggles on He's speaking to the bride, and he's saying, when I take you and you enter into the promised land, which would be, um, perhaps it'll be the garden, the restored garden, you know, in another dimension outside of here, of course, when you enter that land that I give you, and you shall reap the harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the fruits of your harvest. These will be those that will be being brought in during the tribulation. The 144,000 going out to witness to bring in. So you see, he's speaking, and this is what I see anyway. Um, he's saying, when I bring you into, when you're taken, and then you're going to reap the harvest, then you'll bring the sheaf of your first fruits of your harvest unto me. And I, he gave me a dream showing that very thing, which is what I, I thought of my dream. Well, the Holy Spirit reminded me of it. And he, that's exactly what he showed in the dream. Um, I don't want to, well, maybe, um, I'll just quick give you the quick version. In my dream, I was driving a, a, a big white semi that was shiny, clean, perfectly clean and white and, and chrome and shiny. And I was driving it through the countryside down winding roads and through the countryside the winding road I was driving through was a wheat field and I got to my destination and it was some kind of storehouse and you know, like a warehouse <laughs> and I'm going to cover that in a minute Matthew 1330 um, bring the wheat into my barn and I backed up the trailer to unload my load and this <laughs> the man, this man was there and he was, he had a beard and he was all, um, excited to see me and, and I know it was Yeshua. I mean, of course he didn't look like we normally see him. He looked like a normal guy. He had, you know, I think jeans and a, like a flannel shirt on or something, but I knew it was him. In my spirit I knew it was him and he, he said to me, you drive that thing pretty good for not ever driven it before. And I was so happy that he was pleased. I dropped off my load. And then I got into a brand new, like, extra modern, everything digital inside, a brand new Firebird. And we know the Firebird being the Phoenix. And, of course, the enemy uses it. But the, the Phoenix represents rebirth and, um, uh, you know, the firebird, the phoenix, uh, died in the fire and then rose from the ashes. And that's what we will do. Um, our fire being our refining fire, and then we will rise back up. And of course, like I said, the enemy has hijacked that, but it was a brand new white firebird. And I drop off my load, he was happy, and I got in it and I left. I don't remember driving away. I just got, remember getting in the car and, and I sat in the driver's seat. My mom was sitting next to me because she's, she's going to be, she's my partner. Um, I've had several dreams of her and I being together. So I don't know if he's sending us out together. I don't know. But I was just like, wow, this car is really cool. So, okay, that's my dream. So, and that dream he gave me uh, uh, several years ago. So, um, the uh, video is getting long again. That's why I'm talking fast. Um, there's lots for me to, to show you guys. So, uh, moving on, and this all ties to, um, 
as I said, uh, this is a Shavuot, and two loaves will be offered up. Two wave loaves of ten seals, and they shall be fine flour, and they shall be bacon with leaven. Bacon means they're going to be in the fire, and they're going to have leaven. They are the first fruits. So, um, like I said, these will be those who hadn't completely washed themselves clean the way the bride had, which is why they have leaven, which is a corrupting factor, but they are still being accepted. So they don't have to be perfect. So if anybody was freaking out, thinking, oh my gosh, she's saying that you have to be perfect and you got to do works to, to be saved. No, that's not what I'm saying. But everybody has to go through their time of testing. Um, but he's telling us here that even though they're, they're not going to be perfect when the time comes, it's time for them to go as long as their heart is right. Um, so the two loaves could be referring to, um, Jews and Gentiles, those who believe, but he's, you know, all throughout scripture, the Gentiles and, you know, the, the wild olive tree and the natural olive tree, there's always a separation because of course, um, salvation was preached to the Jews first and of course some did accept but many of them did not and then because they rejected it the most part of them it went to the Gentiles so there's always two groups so this is my understanding of, of the two loaves um, but you see it's at, it's at Shavuot so let me show you the calendar and then I guess I'll wrap this one up and go on oh my gosh there's just so much for me to cover Okay, so, I mean, the reason why I'm, I'm, hang on, let me fix this screen. Okay, so the reason why I'm thinking that this calendar is so significant is because, I mean, these numbers, like I covered in that, uh, the last video series that I put up a couple days ago, um, Esther being involved and, um, you know, it's just, there's just too many things that are coinciding. Um, the spring equinox and it, if this is the first day of unleavened bread, it's the Sabbath. So this is the morrow after the Sabbath when first fruits are offered up. So you see what I'm saying? How does it fit perfectly that Esther's fast ends here? She goes in, puts her royal attire on, goes before the king. First fruits are offered up. Three, two, 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 three. <laughs> the manna ceases. This is in uh, Joshua, I believe, chapter five. When, when, um, when they crossed over into the the um, they have to cross over the Jordan into the promised land, and then the manna ceases on Nisan sixteen. So, the manna ceasing meaning, um, things have changed drastically and uh, this this will be outlawed until the two witnesses show up um, so I have first fruits here but it's technically here it's the day it's tomorrow after the Sabbath so um, and and Sabbath has to do with the days the number days, not not Friday, Saturday. Um, and, and there are people who observe a Saturday Sabbath, and that's okay. I, I'm, I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'm just saying as far as scripture goes, there are certain, well, I don't want to get into all that, but anyway. Um, but the, the point I'm trying to make, and then I'm going to cut this one short and continue with the next one. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that here's Shavuot. This is the first fruits of the wheat. So, this is the point where, the time frame, I should say, where Yeshua is telling his disciples in John chapter 4, verse 35, that you say four months into the harvest, that would be at the end gathering, a Feast of Tabernacles. He's saying, I'm saying they're ready to go now. It's time. They're going. Um, they're not perfect, but their hearts are right. It's time for them to go. And of course, the bride's not perfect either. You know, I'm speaking metaphorically. None of us are perfect. No, not one. Um, 
except for him who saved us. Hallelujah. But what I'm trying to get at is he's he's letting us know in that verse that those who will have made themselves ready by this time, because this is 50 days after... Um, after uh hang on uh this is 50 days after uh when you start to count the omar count which is here so um and he might cut it short 10 days and and have them have people who weren't ready in the first go have a 40 day time of testing I don't know. I don't know the timing of that. I'm just guessing. Based on what scripture says. So, um, and, uh, you know, if this date is correct, because there's been some controversy about the exact timing of, you know, when were, was Israel technically declared a nation? You know, this is when they declared it to the world, but was it after that, before that, you know, literally, technically, um, and if we are the, the, you know, the last generation before Israel turns um, 71, then that means that all those who are ready to go by this time are going. Um, However, we do have to keep in mind that, um, you know, a generation is 70 years or 80 by strength. So it could be in anywhere in between 70 and 80. You know, if it's all up to him, of course, he's in charge of the timing of things. So, okay, this video is getting long, um, but I do have some more um, scripture references and... Um, want to talk about how Ruth is um, also being shown as being uh, the bride part of the 144. So I will come back in the next video and start getting into that. But I wanted to point out um, that you know, those who are left behind, who are believers, um, they'll, they'll have their time to get ready. Uh, and I know there are people who don't believe that. They think, you know, as long as you believe, you're going. Well, I know people who, who say they believe, and I, and they're my family members. And, um, I know they believe, but they're not ready to go. So, um, and and that's not not a, it has nothing to do with works. It's not that they have to earn their way. Um, no matter what, they're going to heaven because they believe. No matter what, but the timing of when they go is what I'm referring to. So that's why I said in the last video series that people are they're equating being a believer of any mindset with the rapture. I think it's because they only believe there's one. And if that was the case, then yeah. But as I have already stated that um, that's not really what's laid out in scripture. And that's not me saying that. I just, I, I look at what scripture shows. There's patterns there and we can't change it. They're there for, to guide us. And there's nothing new under the sun, so how, whatever patterns are in scripture, that's how it's going to be. Okay, cutting this off, I will see you in the next video. Love you guys. Shalom.